everyone, I'm Lucy. I live in a yurt with my family in New Zealand, of all places. <laughs> Today, for some reason, I thought it would be a good idea to tackle the topic of life. It's like I think I'm Aristotle, or at least Will Smith. You might have noticed, but I am neither of these people. The only thing that qualifies me to make a video like this is that I have been quite unhappy. I have in recent years made myself a kind of practitioner of happiness and so I thought I would share some of the things big, small, practical, philosophical, some of the things that make a difference in terms of the happiness stakes for me. Now of course happiness isn't the point of life. I don't believe it is. I think the point of life is love. <laughs> the whole point of everything is relationship with one another, with ourselves, with God, with the earth. But I have found that you are often more able to love if you are able to love yourself, which is all linked up with this idea of joy and happiness. And to use happiness to describe that general state of feeling that isn't like, la la la, I'm so happy, but is one of contentment and one of being at peace with yourself and at home in the life that you lead. So that's what I'm talking about when I say ways to be happy. So let me crack on with number one, drugs. I need to get this out of the way. Even the happiest people out there go through life like this, having ups and downs. That is life and that's healthy. We go through bouts of anxiousness, bouts of panic, bouts of real sadness and grief. This is living, experiencing all these emotions, not running away from them, is what life is about. And then there are some people for whom that anxiousness or that depression is unshakable. It's not going anywhere. It's long term and it is stopping you from doing all the things you want to do with your life. And I really suggest if you're feeling that way, head to the doctor, try out some drugs, try out some counselling. I'm thankful to the universe for medicine that has helped my friends get through a severe stage of depression. So don't be ashamed if you're struggling and you need drugs. Okay, number two, do more of what you love. And this is kind of related to drugs, but these are the natural drugs that most people can access in their body. And these are endorphins. I love that most human bodies have this chemical that they create that is basically a happiness drug. Some people can access that drug very readily and others of us have to learn. But in order to access that drug, we actually have to undo a lot of the learning. And the learning that we kind of receive as we grow older is that fun, that fun is for children for Saturday night. <laughs> and actually, fun is for everybody at any time that they need it. Doing what you love, be it playing music, dancing, climbing trees, hanging out with your friends, sleeping, reading. When you do these things, you release endorphins all around your body and you feel this amazing rush of happiness. Happiness can be yours today. I did a big experiment about this a couple of years ago and I should probably do a whole video on it because it was amazing. I read the, a book called The Happiness experiment or the happiness project or the happiness something. I'll link to it in the box. Sorry whoever wrote that book. And it was absolutely magnificent. It was by a scholar but also a Buddhist scholar and it really liberated me to pursue more of what I love in each and every day. To set aside time to do the thing I love and I absolutely have found that by doing that I am a better mother, I'm a better wife and I'm a generally better person to be in the world. Discover what it is you love and then do more of it. Throw yourself at it. Number three, hang with people who get you. As we move through life, we tend to interact with different groups of people. Some people absolutely get us. They get our energy, they get our passions and our enthusiasms and they love us. And they, when we hang out with them, we actually get more energy for all of the things we love. And being together is just like this frenzy of bubbles. <laughs> and then there's people who you often feel like you're trying to explain yourself to or you're trying to pretend to be who you're not really. You're trying to hide all that weird stuff about you or something. And sometimes those people are unavoidable and I appreciate that. But as you move through your life, try and keep it in balance. Don't spend too much of your time with people who don't understand you and who don't value and love you. If you have a lot of those people in your life, then you need to find a lot of people who love you and get you 
Find them on Instagram. Find them on your community notice board. Join groups in order to find them. But it's absolutely vital that you have people in your life who get you. Prioritize it if you can. Number four, this is a quick trick, bit of a hack perhaps that I have found to help my everyday feel much better. And that is to do the thing that I value, the thing that encapsulates who I think I am or who I want to be. I do it first thing in the morning. And this is because if I don't do the thing I want to do for several days in a row, I feel gross. I don't feel like me, I feel unhappy. So I've learned that this thing, and everybody's thing is probably quite different, needs to be done kind of before I really get up and face the day. For some of you it will be meditating, others perhaps praying or, or singing. My thing is writing. I know that I'm a writer, but if I go more than three days without writing anything, I feel horrible. So I have my journal and my pen right by my pillow and before I get out of bed in the morning I just scribble down a few words. If I don't have time to do it in bed I take it to the toilet and I do it on the toilet. Gross eh? Don't tell my mum. I probably only spend about 10 minutes doing it but once I've done it I can then move through my day feeling good. Feeling like I am somebody who does the thing they value. That's kind of strange. I don't know if it's going to work for you but give it a go. <laughs> okay, number five, this one is absolutely mega, but it's the idea that stuff generally doesn't make us unhappy, like things that happen to us even, aren't the thing that makes us unhappy for the most part, but it's our belief system about that thing. So say there is someone who has really frustrated you lately, you then need to unpack that frustration a little bit. What is the belief system around that? So I had this recently where I felt somebody wasn't pulling their weight and when I explored it a little bit I saw that deep down I felt they were unvaluing the thing, the shared thing that we had and really it was that belief that was causing all the frustration for me and then I could ask this question I said is that belief even true? Do they not value this thing? And when I unpacked it, I saw that it's absolutely not true. That actually, they're just trying to do what they can do. And it was a massive revelation. If there's someone or something that is just making you unhappy, look at your belief systems around it and see if the beliefs you're holding about it are actually true. This is based on the work of Byron Katie. I'll also link below in the box thing. She has this whole procedure you can work through. It's all completely free, and I think it would be the ticket to peace for so many people. And as a follow-up to that, so number six, hold a mantra close to your heart that challenges the belief system you bring in quite regularly. So I have an affirmation that I say a lot and it challenges two beliefs that I often carry around with me and that is one, that another person isn't doing enough. <laughs> it's horrible, it's a really bad flaw in me but hey, I'm just being honest, okay? <laughs> and then I also carry this belief system about myself that I'm not good enough often and I'll, I'll never be the good person that I need to be in the world. I'm vacant, I'm unpresent, I go about things mindlessly and I break things and burn things all the time. I burn things all the time. So I'm not ever gonna be the person I need to be. So my mantra is, it's kind of a mantra but it's also a song, it has a tune, maybe one day I'll sing it to you but not today. I trust you trying to do all you can do. And I have that in my mind when I think about somebody not doing what I think they should do. I just say, I trust you, you're trying to do what you can do. And then I have a mantra that is kind of directed internally and it's about that not good enough thing and I say, trust me, I'm trying to be who I can be. So those are my two little mantras and I really suggest that you find your own kind of affirmation so that when you feel that self-talk, that kind of belief system that's not even true creeping in, you can be like, vroom, create this force field around yourself filled with your affirmation and it absolutely helps you move through that moment. It's Okay, so number seven, I watched a great documentary. It's called Happy. I think it's on Netflix. It's wonderful. And it's all about different cultures in the world and how happy they are. And they absolutely concluded that one of the things about happiness is how connected you are to your community. So number seven is eat with people. Get together 
as often as you can with your friends, with your neighbors, and just eat food. Sometimes we can be kind of scared of that idea because it's like, oh, you have to like think of a dinner, dinner food, like proper cuisine. But we have something called crap dinner parties. And basically you bring to the dinner party the thing you were just gonna eat with your family. So it might be like a crappy old bowl of pesto pasta and another person might bring some soup and you bring it all together, you put it on the table and you just eat the boring old mundane food you were gonna have at home but you have it together. And you laugh and you share stories and you eat and then you go home after like an hour and a half. So it's not like a big deal, it's just like this little easy thing you can do once a week. Even the introverts in us, we're meant to be connected to people. We are designed and we've evolved to need each other, to need to belong and we can only do that if we put ourselves out there and actually try and connect with the people around us. Number eight, so the reason I embarked on my own kind of happiness project was because we did all the stuff, we sold our house in London, we moved to a year in New Zealand and basically through the whole thing, I realized that I'm still fundamentally me. I'm me with my meanness and my flaws and my sadness and depression. I've changed everything and yet nothing has changed. So it's really important before you throw everything up in the air to embark on your own happiness project, to make little changes that allow you to be at peace and present to the things around you wherever you are and whatever kind of life you're living. However, sometimes you just have to take one massive gamble. So many people are out there living a life they do not love simply because of social convention or you don't want to take a risk or it's too hard to take a risk or it's too scary or you don't know if you're the kind of person or whatever and you know what I just think that for some people there is a relationship between happiness and taking a big gamble on this one dream that is calling you when we were looking at buying land with another family we kind of wanted to do it but it felt really scary because hey it is quite a big deal but we just imagined ourselves on our deathbeds and we were like is this a decision that we're gonna regret and we were like you know what this is a decision that we'll always look back on and we'll say we wish we just gave that a crack so we did it and we're only coming up three years into this particular off-grid dream with this particular family and it's hard but it's also amazing and it allows us to do so much of what I've spoken about before so we get together with them weekly for dinners and community and so if there's this one big dream that's calling you and you actually think it's going to allow you to do some of this other stuff to make you happy such as hanging around with people who get you eating together, building kinships, I say gamble, throw the dice. Number nine is sort of related, but it's for the people that don't feel this big call or they feel the call, but they actually can't do anything about, about it. It's too big, it's unattainable, whatever. I say change one thing, take just one tiny step towards your dream. Because when you take one tiny step, doors open. If you just say, join your next permaculture meetup in your local town or say join a moon circle or start up a gardening society or a bird watching thing <laughs> just change one thing about your life and you're taking one step towards happiness you're beginning to design the kind of life that you don't need to wake up and feel sad about even just changing that one tiny thing. So I urge you, if you can't take the all that gamble, I urge you to just take that one little step. Finally, number 10 is my absolute fundamental building block for happiness. And this is gratitude. Being thankful is the game changer. It's the thing that allows you to be truly present and truly appreciating exactly everything you have wherever you are right now. So I try and build in little thankful hooks. So um, I think traditionally, you know, you sit, you have grace when you sit down for a meal. And I absolutely believe that the purpose of saying grace was essentially gratitude. It was to take some time to build in this this moment. So yeah, how can you take that old tradition that I guess not many of us really stick to anymore of saying grace? How can you bring that into your everyday, like have these little reminders throughout your day to so just pause, 
take stock of what's around you and shoot out some prayers of thanks to the universe, to God, to yourself, to your family. Just acknowledging all the beauty and abundance of whatever you have, wherever you are. It's the golden ticket, guys, the golden ticket. So those are some of my thoughts about happiness. I'd love to hear if you have any hacks for happiness, little things, rituals or philosophies or books that you've read that have made you move from a place of kind of la 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 life to oh my goodness, we have this one wild and precious life. How am I gonna move through it with contentment and peace? Thank you so much for watching. I love making videos and I feel like it's such an honor that I have people that actually watch them. So thank you, Mwah. wherever you are, so much love to you and stay radical and do all that stuff, you know, like um, subscribe. <laughs> with the bell, press the bell. And also, um, oh, you might wanna join Patreon. So on Patreon, I share little photos throughout the week, um, share lots of resources that I'm kind of currently working on and updates and blah, 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 blah. I think you will love it. So head on over to Patreon and become part of that little community. You know what, it's worth saying twice. Much love to you and stay radical. Mwah. <laughs>